The question is that the motion be agreed to. Mr. Mr. Speaker. I call the Honourable Member David Shearer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, the, the Labor Party will be supporting this bill, although we, have some, uh, we are opposed to uh, one element of it, which I'll get to as I, as I come through uh, my, my, my remarks. Um, I do think that, then, and overall, that this is a, a bill, and through the Select Committee, the Finance and Expenditure Select Committee, um, it, was, it, it um, generated a, a degree of debate, not a hostile debate, but debate in terms of how we can make our student loan uh, mechanism work much more effectively. And as the, as the Minister just said, uh, making this system less paper-driven, uh, streamlined in terms of the agencies in which students uh, go to, as uh, bringing that from two down to one, um, and making it uh, certainly making it easier for students to be able to repay their loans, particularly those students that have gone overseas, is all uh, is all good. Uh, the average loan, uh, student loan, Mr. Speaker, at the moment is about seven, nearly seven thousand dollars per student, um, and about five hundred eighty-seven thousand students have loans. And as the as uh, Minister Dunn just said. About $11 billion uh, in total uh, is curiously designated as a crown asset. I suppose you can, uh, in many ways it is an asset. These people are going through uh, tertiary education and that's a, that's a, a right that we're, we're pleased about. But, but it, yes, I, I, was, I was looking at the, the word asset in terms of this, and playing the word asset in, in terms of what we have, in terms of investing in our future. And it's a very important... It's very important in terms of uh, what New Zealand has um, it, it been able to do throughout, its, throughout its, uh, the history of tertiary education, which is basically to provide easy access for students to be able to get to university um, and have that right of a good tertiary education. And it's a very high quality tertiary education. Um, but $2.3 billion of that money is, uh, is, is money that is, is currently with students overseas. Um, and so the bill, this bill that streamlines the, our ability to be able to bring, uh, to help those students overseas to repay their loan um, is, is uh, to, be, to be welcomed. Um, and I, I wanted to, to, to say that the, the IRD, I think, estimates that in, by 2014, there will be something like uh, $22 million uh, recovered just by, uh, or well, the Treasury, I think, um, re um, estimates that about nearly $22 million will be able to be recovered through the, uh, through the, the changes that have occurred as a result of, of, of this bill. The $20, $22 million, Mr Speaker, is, is, is significant, and obviously um, it, it will accumulate over time um, as we get the basis of, a, of a, a new system, a more streamlined electronic system in place and it can be built on and encouraged uh, um, uh, further after that. This is where we come to the, um, to, to the, the issue where, we, where the Labor Party is not in uh, support of, of this particular aspect and that is the charging of a, a fee to students in order to be able to put this, uh, this uh, in, into place because I think at the moment students uh, in many ways are, are already uh, heavily burdened with a, a student, student loan um, and as we are actually making close to $22 million off the back of the savings that we're going to be, uh, that, that are going to occur, putting an, yet another burden of the administration fee of this, uh, of this bill onto the students I thought we, we believe is, is over the top. Uh, so we are, while we are, uh, are supportive of the bill itself, we are not supportive of the proposal in this bill to add an, a, a transaction fee, an administrative fee, um, on students to, uh, to enable this to come into play. We are earning, as the state, uh, it will take $22 million, it will increase over time, um, and that, I, I believe, uh, Mr. Mr Speaker, is, um, is, is, is unnecessary. Um, it's, it's a fee um, of only 50 to 60 dollars, but nevertheless, over the, um, it's a, a fee which will hit students who are perhaps in a position where they uh, are already financially stretched, um, and, and, and ironically add that to the cost of, of, of the loan 
of the loan already, um, people who are, are already struggling. But while I'm on the topic of this, Mr. 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 Speaker, is the, is, the, is the broader aspect of what is actually happening to student loans. This is a, an, an extraordinarily important subject for the country. Um, the amount of money which we commit um, through student loans, the, the commitment that we, when we make as a country to tertiary education. Um, and yet some aspects, uh, some areas of uh, student loan, people who are trying to get a student loan have been disadvantaged as a result of the, of the last budget. And I'm referring, Mr Speaker, to the, those, those students who are over the age of 55 who have effectively been shut out of um, obtaining a student loan. Now, that's, what that says to me, Mr, Mr. Speaker, is, is, is a couple of things. First of all, what it's saying to me is that people over 55 um, have really no value in our education system because they're too old. And we know, and we know that 55, Mr. Speaker, is, is, um, is, a, is a very age in which many older workers are looking to retrain, upskill, and move on to other on to other things. We know inevitably that people are going to be working longer as as they continue their working lives, um, and they will want to and need to upskill and retrain as a result of that. As, as over the age of 55, it seems highly discriminatory, Mr Speaker, to, to actually to penalise those people rather than in, 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 in support them by going into uh, tertiary education and being able to, to change a, into a different uh, pathway, um, into upskill their, 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 uh, their qualifications so that they can take part in the workforce and be more productive which overall, um, our labour productivity, Mr Speaker, is one of the uh, our lowest in the world and we want to try and see that we provide every encouragement for, uh, for workers to be able to, um, to, move into, uh, to move into more productive employment. This discriminates against those people over 55. But the second thing I want to raise with regard to this is the fact that over 55s have generally been paying taxes all of their lives. So as a result of that, when they get to 55, they say, well, yes, if you're 18, you can get a student loan um, and the state will support you. But when you get to be over 55, uh, despite the fact that you've been contributing to society in most cases, you, are, you, are, you have been excluded. The, the students have been, have been excluded. And I think this is grossly unfair, Mr Speaker. Um, I think that uh, we should, we, this access should Order. be... This access should be, uh, uh, should be universal. Um, it should be not discriminatory. Um, it should be allowed to, allowed to uh, continue uh, for those over 55s, regardless of the fact um, that, uh, well, according to the, the, the tertiary um, education uh, minister, these people have... Uh, these people are, are considered high risk in terms of the, the, the degree in which they pay back the loans. There is, the, despite the fact that I've actually asked the, the Minister for specific questions about over 55s and what courses and, and, where, and what areas have they, uh, have they been uh, not, not paying their loans back, I haven't been able to get that information. So it seems like this has been done uh, somewhat off the... Somewhat off the uh, off the, uh, um, off the seat of the pants from shooting from the hip, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Not really a, th a thought, through, thought through policy, but nevertheless a policy which is targeting and discriminating those people who are older members of our society who, d who want to genuinely go back, retrain, relearn, upskill, um, which is exactly what we're trying to do, certainly on this side of the House, uh, through, our, our, uh, through our education policy. Order. In fact, that's not the case at all. So just coming back to the, uh, to the, to the bill itself, Mr. To the bill itself, Mr. Mr. Speaker, um, as, I, as I said, we, the, the Labour Party will support this piece, of, this piece of legislation. We will support it because it does uh, streamline the ability to collect uh, those loans that are outstanding. It provides a better interface for students who are able to provide... Uh, uh, a better interface for, stu for, for students who have perhaps gone overseas, can communicate through, a, uh, through a, an electronic media, um, replace much of the paper type of uh, um, aspects that have, have, that have been the, uh, that have 
been the hallmark of, of the student loans um, system up to now, um, and recoup, um, according to Treasury figures anyway, $22 million by 2014. So in the next three years, the, uh, the, the amount of money that will, will easily uh, pay for what the... Uh, the, the uh, what is being put in place in terms of the changes to this legislation. Thank you, Mr Speaker. <clears throat> I call